show you my cooking talent. Hmm. A little more secret spice and... Hey! No peeking! This is this looks that look I would People who live an inordinately long time, people whose hair changes color, and those odd heroes' relics. Is Fodlan some mystical land full of inhuman creatures? You should see for yourself. I'd recommend exploring west of the Empire. Thanks. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. This is no... I'll keep my...
Sorry? Edelgard and Hubert have been busier than usual. Constantly coming and going, in and out of Garrick Mach? Perhaps they are doing something in the Empire. As the legitimate heir of the Iyer family, I have not heard anything about it. But if it were significant, I am sure my father would have told me. What a kind gift. What a kind... you, Professor. Did Hanneman make his I will do no harm speech or promise this won't hurt a bit when he asked to study you? Both? I've a bit of research I'd like to perform. Nothing so crass as Hanneman's poking, prodding, and drawing of blood. No, I wish to investigate crest power itself. Crest power must have some kind of limit, right? Lady Rhea says any limits must be the protection of the goddess, but that doesn't quite answer it for me. between Lady Rhea and my brother. She wants to do something at the Holy Tomb. I do not know what, but... Hmm... Whenever it has concluded, I hope they will return to their friendship, as it has always been. is due to the influence of the Crest of Flames? Intriguing. Unfortunately, I have found no record of Nemesis's hair and eye color ever changing. However, if that transformation was brought on in part by the power of the Crest, that would be most... well, I suppose interesting is too small a word. Still, it would be an absolutely exceptional discovery. To know for certain, we must investigate further. So, close off. What? A full physical is in order, yes? We need to know if this transformation affected you adversely. Don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. Oh, yes, I, I should call Manuela. My apologies. Oh. 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 Oh.
to be honest. worked here for years, and this is the first I've heard of it. I mean, it does make some sense. Sort of. Something about it is still weird. I understand now why they'd build the monastery in the mountainous center of Fodlin. Although... When the monastery was built, the kingdom and alliance weren't even around yet. But look how cleverly it was placed right in the middle of the empire, kingdom, and alliance. That's weird, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Professor. You're certainly not going easy on me. You fight like a mercenary, not a knight. You hunger for victory, pure and simple. You may not be aware of it yourself, but I see it. Indeed. Knights ought to have some hunger. I've always thought so. They depend too much on their swords. Only when they're rested away do knights consider their hands and feet as weapons. That's not how it was for warriors of old. They weren't limited by their tools. Victory is what matters, not the method of achieving it. 
That's the attitude to adopt. I detect that in your style. It is plain to see. You may take it however you like. I believe the difference between us lies within that hunger. But where does it come from? From the start, I was aiming to win. Yet I couldn't defeat you. Then I remembered something you said before. Indeed. I was raised to value strength above all else. Whereas you had a reason, an ambition, pushing you toward that hunger. So tell me, what was the reason? Why were you driven to become so strong? That's a mercenary's answer, to be sure. So that is the source of your hunger. I suppose I must find my own. Ah, uh, if we're to get along, I think not. I'll be content if you continue to train with me. Perhaps it will come to me as I swing my sword. Excuse me. You haven't a thing to worry about. You have been gifted the power of the goddess. Furthermore, you have overcome the death of your father, Geralt. And you have destroyed countless of our wicked foes. I am proud. So very proud of who you have become. <laughs> Once we finish the ritual at the Holy Mausoleum, all will be well. It is you. I am sorry, but I have a lot on my mind. I would prefer to be alone right now. Professor, will you join me? There's something I must do. It will take a few days, but I promise we'll be back in time for the ceremony at the Holy Tomb. It's meant to be a secret, but I'm going to Enbar, the Imperial capital. There is something I must do there. Thank you, my teacher. Father, forgive me for asking this of you. I know how much pain you're in, how the burden of the throne weighs heavily on you, and so... There is no need to apologize, Edelgard. You must know <laughs> that I do not have much time left in this world. The time has come. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Now, to complete the Imperial succession, you must relinquish your crown here in the throne room. The Archbishop of the Church of Saros would normally act as witness, but my professor will fill that role instead. Edelgard. From this day forward, the weight of the Empire's future shall rest upon my shoulders. All that I do will be for the benefit of the people of Fodlan. Edelgard von Hesvelg, the crown is yours. 
by the covenant between the red blood and the white sword, and by the double-headed eagle upon your head, I hereby pronounce you the new emperor. Are you prepared to take those responsibilities as your own? In accordance with the ancient covenant, and in keeping with the Hrasfeld legacy, I swear that upon this throne, I shall use my reign to lead Fodlan to a new dawn and achieve peace for all. The Imperial succession is complete. <laughs> my daughter, I regret that I could not do more for you. When you were stolen away to the kingdom, when the Prime Minister did those horrible things, I could only watch in horror. I... I understand, Father. In those dark times, your eyes and your fists were my salvation. Within your eyes, I saw true care. And upon your fists, clenched tight with indignity, I saw the blood that dripped and fell. Even as I bled, I felt that you too must also be bleeding. Your Majesty... You must not leave your sleeping chambers in your condition. Ah, Edelgard. I did not expect to find your highness here. Prime Minister, you have misspoken. I am no longer your highness, but rather your majesty. I impossible! It is true. Edelgard is the new emperor of the Adrestian Empire. We will summon the officials <coughs> and prepare an ordinance at once, and you, Prime Minister, are dismissed. It will be some time before you are allowed to make contact with the outside world again. No! How can this be? I... <coughs> understood, Your Majesty. My dear L, I leave the fate of Fodlin <coughs> in your capable hands. Father. Thank you for staying by my side, Professor. Now that I'm the Emperor, it's time to grasp my destiny. After the ceremony at the Holy Tomb, I must return to Enbar. This may be the last we see of each other. We are out of time, my teacher. Everyone is waiting for us. We must go. Did you call me? Oh, this is my favorite tea. Do you, um, have sugar? Lots, please. I am grateful. I feel at ease. met you, I don't think I'd be who I am today. <laughs> My hair color is pretty unique, huh? I feel at ease. Is nice and all, but it's not much good when you don't have sweets to go with it. Ah, that tea was delicious. Invite me again sometime. See ya!